Welcome back. This is Excel 10 Minute Leaders Live. My name is Graham Brown, joined by Ambika Davy, all the way from the US. Ambika, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Graham. Good. Well, we've got 10 <laughs> minutes together, Ambika. Are you ready for this? I am. Let's do it. Let's do the business cards first. Do you have a business card? If so, what's on it? If not, what would be on it? Ah, okay. I'm, uh, I teach meditation mm -hmm. and I'm an astrologer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a coach. Both in the same package? Do they Absolutely, work together? Absolutely, they could be. Okay. They, they could be, although meditation is what I mostly speak about and teach about. Mm. And then yeah. astrology is a tool that I use in my coaching business. Okay. I don't know if you're aware, today, well, at least for us, but tomorrow for you is World Youth Schools Day, according to the United Nations. They don't teach meditation at school. Well, they may do in some schools, but vast majority I, of public schools they don't yes or that's they should true. do how would you teach meditation to kids well i started meditating at six at school mm. i went to a quaker school so every mm. wednesday morning starting from first grade we went to sit for one hour with the first through sixth graders so we weren't told this is meditation. We weren't told you have to do anything specific. We just went to sit in a quiet, cool, comfortable space for an hour. Mm -hmm. And it became something really natural for me. Now, it, to teach meditation, which is actually a mission of mine, Graham, I want to teach meditation to everybody. I want to make it a tool that everybody can use before they begin any process. So in a school, when you come in in the morning, some breathing, some sitting, some quiet and focus and then get into it. And then to instill this kind of behavior in groups and organizations. Can you imagine if you went into a boardroom meeting and everybody sat down, exhaled, took a few breaths together, focused on what their goal was, hmm. how much more productive that meeting would be and before a test to get rid of the nerves, to get rid of everything that's confusing, to get everybody feeling confident, how much better all of those students would do. Mm. Why don't we do that then? I think, I think because the, I think the stigma of sitting and focusing like that may mm. seem uh, a little prayer like maybe mm. to some people. Seems but uh, yeah, I, 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 I run into that all the time, Graham, mm. that people think that yoga is religious based or a religion. Yeah, you can get religious about going to a gym or exercising or a habit that you have. But why not make that habit something like focusing, breathing, grounding, centering and meditating and getting on the same page as everybody else? Mm. I think. Some people, myself included, have tried medicate, meditation. Medication. <laughs> that's, that's plan B. Plan A, meditation. We've tried. I mean, I believe in it. The trouble is, is that the discipline of just quieting it down, I think for some people it comes a lot easier, that their brain is a lot quieter. But for mm. me, and for sometimes maybe it's the type A, the entrepreneurs, those boardroom people who are meditating and then, you know, they have that thought, which is, have I paid the gas bill? And then, you know, that goes down the rabbit hole and it's very hard to control that. Is that just a case of training or, you know, are there some people that can't meditate? I think it's a misconception of what meditation is. There are different ways to trigger the state. It's a state of being. And there are more difficult and challenging ways like Zazen meditation to have to sit in a very regimented position and, think of nothing is near yeah. impossible for most people. Now, if you have the willpower to just force into it for probably three and a half years, you'll get it. But how many people have three and a half years of patience? They don't. Mm. So what I've been researching, researching and experimenting with personally and teaching for 44 years is using the sound of your own voice, primordial sound, and breathing specific pranayama, breathing mm. exercises, so that you can trigger the mind into quiet so much more effectively and efficiently. So likely you were just trying ways that were darn near impossible. Mm. 
So you're saying there are different ways to mm. meditate. And yes, some may work for different people. No, it, it's not to meditate. It's to trigger the state of meditation. Mm. You see, I think to think of meditation as an activity is where mm. we begin to go wrong. Mm -hmm. The activity is a trigger to take us into it. Let's look at sports practitioners mm. who, you know, a runner, a skater who gets in the zone, right? They, they lose themselves. That's one of the things. Meditation is a withdrawal of the senses. So in mm. order to intellectualize it, we need to understand our five senses and then a higher level of super sensing and then the potential of psychic sensing. But we have to withdraw from all of those mm. in order to disconnect from the control of the ego mind. What then is the best way for somebody to achieve that state given that most people are busy and given that even for somebody to say oh well five minutes in a day mm -hmm. they don't even find that most people right because they're constantly in this i suppose agitated state that something needs to be done how do you sort of get people out of that because even to say to somebody sit in a room for an hour it's like, well, I oh, no. yeah, hour. I think if like, they had tried to explain it to us, we never would have done it. <laughs> no. So where do you start? What are the small wins? Is it, is it something like you can do something small, like meditate, um, you know, achieve meditation at this point I think in your what, day or what? Depending on what, what is, what the goal is, what the goal of the group is, hmm. I'll utilize that so that that's kind of like the carrot to chase hmm. and then to lead a breathing or maybe even something physical, shaking the body out. Uh, centering exercises can be really easy. Uh, those of you who've practiced any martial art, you know about standing in a horse stance. The legs are a little mm -hmm. bit wider, the knees are a little bit bent. But then uh, if you make it a comfortable position like that, legs just a little wider than hip width, bounce on the heels, leaving the fronts of the feet in contact with the ground or the floor. Tapping the heels, this will enliven the central nervous system and then sink down a little bit, drop the weight, bend the knees a little bit, close the eyes, exhale deeply, take deep breath in, pause, exhale, pause. It's those pauses, they're called kumbhaka in Sanskrit, and those pauses are when the mind gets quiet. So as you begin to taste that a little bit, mm. then you start to get the sense of, wow, I really can achieve this. But if you've never consciously stopped the subvocalization of the mind, then you can't fathom what it feels like. Mm. Yeah, that's constant. Mm -hmm. Everybody has it. Life. You're okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has it. And you talked about doing it in a group as well. Mm -hmm. Is that a sure. key part of keeping this going? I mean, uh, why are we doing depends. this group as opposed to an individual? Well, let's look at different types of people, Graham. There's people who are very happy, isolated, and there are people who are going nuts, isolated, right? Mm. So if you're a person who wants to go to festivals and be in crowds, then yes, a group is going to work for you. If you're an introvert and you like doing projects and things on your own, then learning a uh, practice all by yourself is going to work better for you mm -hmm. in the beginning. Ultimately, you should be able to sit down in any situation and drop yourself into this state of meditation, but this takes years of practice, mm. lifetimes of practice. You could, yeah. you could say. Yeah. And for you as well, Ambika, what's that like for your meditation? Do you, I mean, I'm sure some people assume that you're just kind of floating on a cloud and you've achieved the <laughs> state of enlightenment that, you know, that's how it is for the guru, if you like, but what's the reality for yourself I, I think... in meditation on a daily basis? I, I encourage everybody to go and find uh, situations where monks or the Dalai Lama answers this question mm. because any, any Swami, any great teacher, Lama will giggle when you, when you ask them, you know, are, are you 
are you enlightened or, you know, do you, do you have such a clear mind? Is it always like a lake? It, they'll laugh at you and tell you I'm human. You know, I experience the mind waves, but the differences in the reaction and re-reaction. So if we're re-reactive, then we're constantly rolling back into the reaction and experiencing it again. Mm. But yeah, you you get angry uh, just like everybody else. Everybody right? does, you're, but you're, you're identify it, it and then neutralize it. Wonderful, Ambika Devi, everybody. Where do we find out more about you? Ah, you can find me on my link tree. So that's really easy. If you're not familiar with link tree. The link goes L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash my name, Ambika Devi, A-M-B-I-K-A-D-E-V-I. And you can also find me at AmbikaDevi.com. So my name, A-M-B-I-K-A-D-E-V-I.com. Ambika, thanks for joining us today. Thanks really so much, Greg. 